Good evening, Canterbury. I'm Mike Adley. Welcome to Newsmakers, where we debate the week through Canterbury eyes. It's a pleasure to introduce our panel from Christchurch Cathedral, the Dean Peter Beck. Good evening. And uh, the ECAN chairman in exile <laughs> from Lane Neve Law. I think this is ECAN's answer to the Dalai Lama, <laughs> who also is in exile, if I'm correct. Alec <coughs> Neal, good evening. Well, the Dalai Lama and I have much in common, but uh, <laughs> definitely Alec Neil Lane Neve uh, in exile. Yeah. Uh, no way. You're not, you're not Alive going, and well. You're not Alive going Buddhist well. on us. No, not at all. <laughs> well, that would be a nice thought, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we are going to start with the oh-so-easy, oh-so-gentle <laughs> issue of the emissions trading scheme, which has come into force this week. Should New Zealand get in behind it, or will it be perceived as a long-term lemon? Alec. Well, on this same show, probably 18 months ago, I expressed my view about uh, these issues um, and global warming and all of that. Um, I believe that we have a responsibility to be in a scheme, whether we should lead the world or not. I said on this show at that time, we should be in concert with Australia and the USA, and I haven't changed that view. But hey, we've introduced it. Um, Australia, in turn, have got rid of their Prime Minister. So uh, mm. um, perhaps um, we are uh, playing the game as it needs to be played. John Key is still in power. So mm. do I take it you think New Zealand is out in front on this issue? Oh, I definitely believe that we're out in front with respect to our Western closest partners, and that is Australia and the USA. Mm. Um, and our l larger uh, trading partner, of course, is now China. And of course, uh, when they introduce it, who knows? Um, but I think we have to just wait and see what happens in Australia. I think that after the election, Julia Gillard will, in fact, introduce and implement um, a similar system. Mm. And I will watch that with interest. Do you think, Peter, um, John Key is right, and I'm sure Labour mm -hmm. politicians would say the same thing, that at the end of the day, New Zealand must be seen to be pulling its weight if we want to, for example, keep selling Canterbury lamb into British yeah. supermarkets? Absolutely. I think the Aussies are wimps. Uh, this issue is so crucial. You know, I was over at, on Monday at Antarctic New Zealand talking to Lou Sanson uh, with someone looking at the oceanography. And, you know, what's happening there is just mind-blowingly scary of what's going on in terms of climate change and the rest and the ozone layer and whatever. We have to do something. We have to move much more quickly than we are moving. And we're just playing at it. I mean, we may be a little bit in front, but it's hard. It's a little whimper, really, in terms of the kind of things that we should be doing. Mm. So I'm all for us doing this. We've got to do a lot more. And to, just to say that uh, to, to work in concert with the Australians and the US, they have been so slow so backward in coming forward that you have to ask, do you actually care about future generations? So, you know, maybe it's, it's not, I'm not scaremoring, I'm just absolutely aware of the fact this is a big, big, big issue that's, that's uh, emissions trading scheme is part of the whole thing. But unless we tackle this, this issue as a world community, and um, we ain't doing it very well at the moment, we are in serious trouble. My, my concern is that uh, carbon trading, uh, no one fully understands it. Mm -hmm. um, the people that are going to get extremely rich are the yeah, traders. Absolutely. And that, in yeah. fact, the reality is that these trees and things won't be planted, but somebody uh, in operating a computer somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. probably in a tax haven, uh, will become extremely mm -hmm. rich mm -hmm. by uh, operating the trading schemes. And that's of concern to me. Yeah, I agree with you. How damaging do you think the revelations in the lead-up to Copenhagen have been in terms of public buy-in to man-made climate change? All of the exaggerated claims that you know the Telegraph newspaper in Britain revealed and so forth. Has that been a really damaging factor? Well, I, think, I think it's undermined some credibility, but again, the overall evidence, wherever you look, mm. is actually saying, look, this is... There's a both, there may be a natural part process in this, but there's a hell of a lot of man-made consequence in what's going on here. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a bit unfortunate that they didn't, you know, they didn't actually sort of provide the substantial evidence that was required. But it is there. It's just I don't know what happened, but but certainly the vast majority of science. I mean, to actually say that this is not nothing to do with us anymore is nonsense, absolute nonsense. And again, you know, I was down in Antarctica last year meeting the uh, scientists at McMurdo, the American station. They took us round stuff, they showed us stuff, as with some of the people from the Erebus, you know, mm. relative to the Erebus crash, yeah. where they're looking around there. And I said at the end uh, to, to this American scientist, um, so what's the prognosis? And she said, as you might expect, she said, um, well, for the Earth, the Earth will carry on, obviously. But for the human race, it's up to us. And that's right, it's up to us. And we ain't doing very well at it at the moment. Obviously, given your uh, political past, um, 
you know uh, how tough these kind of issues can be politically. Do you think National is going to lose a bit of support to act over this? Uh, over the next six months, the answer is very much yes. Um, but I think that their timing is correct in that if they waited till Australia introduced it, we'd be looking uh, late this year, early next year. Um, we then have an election within eight or nine months of that time that if you're going to do something, you always do it halfway through a term of parliament. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly almost to the day uh, what this what this particular uh, parliament is done. So I think that their timing is correct. Uh, we will have moved on to other issues uh, by the time we get to the next election rather than this issue. Mm. On a Canterbury front, I wonder if a lot of townies in Christchurch will be aggravated by the fact that they will see their power prices go up this month. They've already seen the, uh, the jump at the pump for petrol, yet the likes of dairy farmers are essentially being given a bit of a free ride for now. Is that fair? Well, the question really is the whole question of um, cows, um, what, what was that campaign, um, but basically cows um, farting, uh, yeah. farting cows. Um, to what degree does that or doesn't that add uh, to the issues that we're now facing? 50% uh, of emissions is ab agriculture, isn't ab it? Absolutely, but agriculture is the backbone of the New Zealand economy. Uh, ha is and has been, and notwithstanding what David Longy and others said uh, in 88, um, that hey, it, it was a dying um, part of our economy and that we were going to be led by IT and things. Mm. The fact is, it is still 60% of our economy, and if ever we need to do something, it is to ensure that the backbone of our economy is retained. Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. We'll take a break. Uh, coming up, we're going to look at uh, another big social issue alcohol reform. And man, is that a political hornet's nest? Uh, we'll have a look at a few issues pertaining to that, and plenty more with Dean Peter Beck and Alec Neil. Do stay with us.